Hey everyone, welcome to Josette's Soul Salon, where we have weekly conversations that answer the question, what does it take to live a soul express life? I'm your host, Josette Leblanc, and during this episode, I share a powerful roundtable discussion with three creative forces of nature, Haley Tallman, Christina Eisenhower, and Jordan Cure. Our unlived creativity is not benign. Creative energy is a force that moves through us and needs to be released. We're born creatives, and yet many of us feel blocked in our creative expression. And there's no one more qualified to help us understand how to get unblocked than these three creative souls. Haley Tallman is an art therapist and women's empowerment coach. Jordan Criar is a business alignment coach and creativity guide. Christina Eisenhower is a creative empowerment coach and energy alchemist. And the three of them together? Well, they have an eye-opening way of putting life in perspective. During this episode, we explore what creativity is and the role of embodiment and intuition in accessing creativity. We also explore the healing potential of creativity, how to foster it, and the relationship between creativity, mental health, and the current paradigm shift away from toxic productivity. You'll want to listen to the end because that's when we explore how creativity could be the most important element in healing the state of the chaos we're experiencing on this planet. To connect with Haley, Christina, and Jordan, check the links in the show notes. And if you enjoy what you hear, make sure to subscribe to this podcast and leave a review. Now let's get into the salon. All right. I am so excited to have this soul salon conversation with the three of you today, Haley, Jordan, and Christina. Thank you so much for being here. So, so excited. Um, Today, we're going to be talking about creativity, which is an important topic to the to the three of these women. And um, it's a conversation I've had with all of them individually. Um, and so I'm just getting chills at the thought of getting them together to have a conversation around this topic. Um, so uh, let's just dive in. Let's just dive in. Um, that's how I roll. I just like diving into the deep questions. No, okay. nothing fluffy around this. So the first question <laughs> is, what does creativity mean to you? Um, yeah, that's that's where we're going to start. Where What does creativity mean to you? Whoever feels like jumping in, go ahead. I want to jump in, thing, you know, because like from a broad perspective, we can sit there and be like, well, anybody's creative. Everybody is creating something. And I come from a world of um, used to work in tech and used to work with a lot of engineers and project management and recruiting. So you could say, well, the engineers are creative too. They're developing. It's, you know, they're creating amazing things. They're disrupting whatever. But that's very left brain. It's very much logic. And so I think for me these days, creativity is all about engaging my right brain and just giving that strategy side, the left brain side a break. Um, So anything that's like engaging my right brain and and rebalancing is like creativity Mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was going to jump in and say that for me, it's, it's all those things that Jordan just said, but, um, like for me it's very spiritual so to me it's like synonymous with with humanity so be now what i mean by that is like as jordan said we could say everybody's creative and you know a lot of people say they aren't which always blows my mind um but to me we i believe in like a creator okay when but not like god on a throne or something like that but i believe that there's a creative source and everything in the in the world is like nature it's it's constantly creating and um humans have this ability to for me when we when we create we are uniting like we're we're attuning and aligning ourselves with creative source and so it's you know it's something that we to me is it's like tragic that like I'm in Canada, we don't value it nearly enough. And people see it as this like fluff, you know, fringe thing that it's like the, you know, like, ah, uh, that's, you know, crafting or, you know, it, it, it's to me, it's so, so, so much more than that. But uh, yeah, I'll see what Christina has to say. 
Oh, you guys are spot on for sure. And <laughs> this is just like so great. It's like, like round robin because yeah, right brain, that's mindedness kind of uh, approach or the creativity is a mindset, right? I believe that as well. And the same thing that any kind of um, creative, uh, creativity is a spiritual act. Definitely. It comes from within and from that spirit to that you're called to create something for me. Um, so we've got the mind and we've got the spirit. And I'm just going to throw in the body there <laughs> in the sense that because we are human bodies, it is your birthright and your responsibility. So it's a responsibility to yourself, the way I see it, to express what makes you, you, right? So even though we've all just said, we're all creative, you know, nobody's excluded for sure, but it's the creative process um, and output, I think, that is as unique to you as your thumbprint and your signature, your voice or accent, whatever, you know, your appearance, right? None, none of us are, no two of us are alike, right? So that's what creativity uh, means to me. I never, I never separate real life from creative life. It is all your life. So that's why I think mm. creativity. Yeah. Okay, so so the physical the physical sense that you're expressing is like, as a physical being, you are creative. You are creative, and also. Does it also relate to the things you create, like that material element? I think it's the act. So like mm. creative, I, I like to think of as creative as a verb, right? Because it's the act of creating your life, your whatever that process looks like, whatever the output is, whatever it, the spirit that moves you to do such an act, mm -hmm. that's creative. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And, yeah. and, it, and if I can throw something in, like capitalism has turned creativity into being about what you create, right? Like the product. Mm -hmm. And then like, there's the whole, you know, our creativity and art synonymous. Like there's, that's a whole other question and, and, you know, thing we could go into, but I find that, that in, in, you know, little polls I've taken here and there, art is much more intimidating for most people than the word creativity there's a lot more like movement and space and wiggle room within the word creativity um i find most people will connect more quicker with creativity than they would with art what do you guys do you guys find that you women this question yeah <laughs> yeah jordan if you go ahead if you have anything on that yeah absolutely i think that you know because of capitalism mainly and because of you know how we're conditioned we sit there and we start to really become too focused on the product and i know for myself it um you know when we talk about not valuing art or creativity it's really and still is a process of reclamation of um you know taking back you know giving myself permission to create and for a long time i didn't because uh, you know, working in Silicon Valley, where everything's about, you know, creating a product to sell, uh, it just didn't seem worth it. it did, and that's really sad to get to that place and, and to think, you know, creativity is not worth it because I don't have a plan for how to monetize this. And so it's been like a process for me of, um, you know, creating creative practice in my own life and really focusing on the process. And that's what I help others with is, to really let go of that left brain of like judging the what's this result going to be because people when they think about art they think about creating a specific vision and in reality there are so many insights that come out of the process that are so much richer and yield so much more than um i like to call it like a creative souvenir which is beautiful a lot of times uh at the end of the process so uh and also like Haley, what you were saying with um you know creativity being very spiritual and I'm curious what you guys think I'm finding like the quickest route to connecting to soul or connecting to spirit in order to really create um what wants to be created that's like bigger than myself the quickest route to get there is through embodiment is through my body like being open to intuition which I receive through my body like 
what color do I want to use and just trusting. And it just, I don't know, that's what I'm finding. And it's still a practice for sure, but curious what you guys think. I think that is beautiful, Jordan. And I loved the uh, phrase of creative souvenir. Oh my God, that's Mm -hmm. awesome. Because it's something that you're going to, you know, take away or take with you, take home. Right. And of course you're your own home as well, but, um, yeah, the idea that it's um, what color am I going to use or what do I, wh- where am I going with this or whatever? I don't care who sees it. I don't really necessarily need or want anybody to see it. It's for me. And so that kind of um, embodiment, as you put it, is like the, the key phrase that I use in my program as well, which is to embody the energy, the creativity and the spirit of being alive because you are a creative being. So the more you can embody all of that, you know, you're going to need the energy for sure. <laughs> and a lot of people say, oh, I don't have any energy for that. Or, you know, I, I'm out of energy or whatnot. Nobody really is, right? It doesn't ever go away. But then the creativity they think of as art, well, I don't know what to do. Should I take photographs or should I paint or should I sculpt or should I dance or, you know, just move, just let the spirit move you and you will experience what it means to truly be alive because yeah. you're creating that kind of thing. And that makes me think um, of how I do art therapy. So you know, a lot of people are like, what happens in art therapy, you know, and, and, and to be honest, I don't know what a lot of other people do in art therapy, but, but what I do is, um, I might give you a big tray and say, go around my space and just gather, like gather whatever grabs you. And yeah, you're, it's like what Jordan said, your, your intuition is telling you through your body what you want to create. And it's, it's, it's incredible. People are like, well, you know, actually most people like it and jump right into it, but occasional people are like, well, without a plan, like, I don't know what I'm making. <laughs> like just see what you gravitate towards. And, you know, I have like pom poms and, and old keys and stones and yarn and, you know, recycled bubble wrap, you know, and people just gather it all on their tray and then and it's also just the abundance, right? Like all these messages around art and, and art materials being precious. Like, no, you can keep that tray as full as you want. And then you don't have to use it all. Just see what from that, from what you gather, from what your body tells you to gather, see what you want to create. And it already, it's, it's crazy because it, it already knows like it, your intuition, your inner voice, it already knows. And so these, I just love, that's what I love about my job is sitting there watching people put something together at it that, that didn't exist before. Right. And sometimes I feel like I'm witnessing a miracle, you know, it's like mm-hmm. after half an hour, there's this creation that didn't exist before that they, if they trust themselves and, and that's why you have to have a good relationship right? It's all about the relationship and any kind of therapy or coaching. Um, if they just, if you, if they feel safe and if they feel totally accepted and that they belong, they will create very freely and very spontaneously. And then from that creation, we'll often get a major insight. Yeah. So that's, uh, I want to talk about this, um, this point of, it sounds like what you're saying is there's an, there's a, there's almost an unlearning of uh, like, cause my son, my son, my kid, I mean, four years old, it's amazing what he puts together. He'll just like block, 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 block. He has, I know he has no idea what's going on with his Legos. And at the end, he's created this amazing, like like the, the other day he created a, a, a push cart, a flight attendant push cart for the snack snack bar, <laughs> you know? And it was so intricate and, but he doesn't know what's going on at first, right? And I find myself um, challenged to play with him sometimes because I can see that I'm hooked on the plan or hooked on, the strategy or something that I can see it now as I listen to you. So there is 
almost an unlearning that has to happen right where does where does this where does this happen where why do we lose our creativity we are born with it it is so why do we what's why do we lose it yeah that's a that's a tough question it's like that quote from picasso i think it was right you know it's like every child is born an artist but to remain an artist is the the difficult part i've got that all wrong but yeah something like that yeah, it's like sort of beaten out of us as we go along, <laughs> you know, those art yeah. teachers or the the mom or, you know, whatever. None of my artwork as a kid was ever posted on the refrigerator. It was ever displayed anywhere. You know, I did a whole lot through Girl Scouts and in, in classes at school and things like that. And somehow they were always just in the garage sale every year. I don't know. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. but I, what I think, your your question Josette is that Jordan answered beautifully and that is trust and the surrender which we all know I think very well in terms of just open yourself allow offer up all that negative energy or all those blockages or that you know learned conditioning whatever it might be and create whatever comes to you right mm-hmm. like Jordan mm-hmm. said what a color, what, you know, uh, what materials like Haley, you know, all those kinds of things, just let it come. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's so interesting when we're little, how easy it is to be creative. It's just like breathing. It comes naturally. We know we're amateurs and we're just like, well, what's possible? You know, that (laughs) might've been what's guiding your son. What's possible. Let me combine all these different things. Like when I was little, I would just, um, like six years old, I was writing like the pumpkin who didn't want to become a pie, writing like a full length little book. And then, you know, um, the Bat Boy series about a flying dog. I wrote like a series of little books when I was six years old. And then schoolwork became very intense. And so it was just this conditioning. And I learned from, you know, I lived in a small town in Indiana um, that the people who were successful were typically in the sciences or, you know, in finance or, and I took those cues. And so I think that my creative focus, focus on creativity just started to kind of atrophy because if we don't practice something like, of course, like our language skills are going to get better than our creative or art skills because we just don't focus on it in school and then in culture too. So it's absolutely a process of, I think, deconditioning and, and unlearning that. Yeah. And I have to touch on what Christina said, like, you know, to me, that's an art scar. Like like Mm -hmm. you, you seeing your, your art that you cared about that it meant something to you in the, in the garage sale or, or not seeing it on the fridge, you know, like we get all these messages constantly, you know, sometimes I wonder where I would be if my parents weren't constantly like, Oh, you're an artist. You're like, they told me what I was right. Because (laughs) whatever, I painted something that looked kind of realistic when I was like four, you know? And that was a message that I've constantly got. And, oh, you're not gonna be good at math. And so I wasn't good at math. And, oh, you're an artist. So you're gonna be an artist and I, and I am an artist. But, you know, what I get pigeonholed in with a lot, um, at least in Canada, I don't imagine as much in uh, California there, uh, Jordan, but people hear art therapy and they think, oh, it's for kids, you know, kids like art, let's put kids in art therapy. And sure, like it works really well for kids, but I want to work with adults because we are born, as we've all said, with this innate desire to create and, and it, it, it does so much for our, our heart and soul and body and mind. And, and then we're just conditioned that if we're not good or we can't render realistically, um, that it's it's not worth anything and um Brene Brown says that unused creativity is not benign right it's not benign like it it eats away at you like your un your unexpressed your unlived life right and Josette what's the main question for that how do you live a yeah of- how do you how do you live a soul expressed life this is what we're right? asking in like in, yeah yeah like if and it doesn't have to be visual art, right? I think, I think, mm. you know, that's my point. Yeah, exactly. But I mean, like, whatever it is, if yoga or, or movement or dance or cooking or anything where you're thinking a little bit outside the box and you're basically like probably textbook definition of creativity is 
making something that didn't exist before or like creating something out of nothing or yeah <laughs> um but oh that's what you thought <laughs> yeah. it's so interesting because i mean in california okay maybe not so much in like hollywood and making movies and things like that obviously creatives are very much valued um but okay like in tech it's interesting so moving beyond just even like you know art therapy and artists um i remember how just there were these signaling cues that even designers were less value like just comments from um my managers would just be like oh she's just a designer so even within tech the people who were on the creative side the ui ux people the front end people received less respect on a very kind of like nuanced like subtle level and so it's so interesting how even you know in different industries there is that kind of subtle like low-key just like throwing shade at creatives um yeah. well this yeah. is super fascinating uh, because what i'm hearing the like all the different i love that you're you know you have such different backgrounds because what what we're ultimately saying <clears throat> is that creative expression is an intuitive act, right? It's intuitive. Therefore, you have to be in tune with your intuition in order to feel in flow with your creative expression, right? It's, it's, so if you don't know, you know, if you don't have a relationship with your intuition, you're gonna have, it's gonna be challenging for you to get, get out of the box as like Haley was saying, and, um, and, and all and, and so on and to create as Christina talks about um, from the body and uh, Jordan too. Um, so this also brings to mind like the dichotomy of intuitive is connected with divine feminine energy usually, right? Like, and more, I guess, uh, Jordan, you correct me, I always mess up left, right, left, right brain. <laughs> left brain would be more strategic is that is that am yes. I correct there? Mm -hmm. And the strategic is definitely more divine masculine, and we can also see the imbalance, the imbalance of those energies in our world, right? Where science and strategy is elevated, and intuition, and you know that that idea of surrendering and not acting is not valued. It's confusing and scary to people, right? Mm -hmm. And so on the grander, like grander scale, you know, this is what's at play. It's, it's this kind of, I see it, creativity is, is a, uh, it's a battle between these two uh, battles, maybe a strong word, but it's, it's a, it's a kind of, there's a playing, there's a, there's a balance trying to come in, but it's challenging. And this is why your work is so important because you're helping people get back in tune with their innate skill of intuition through the art the, the action of creativity it's so powerful Ugh, i'm sorry yeah <laughs> yeah yeah um okay. and 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 so and then that that is what is required to live a soul expressed life it's one of the ways that we get there and you the three of you are facilitators of that process so now so there i can see the link so the three of you have are, are doing your own in your own uh your own work at trying to get your clients and the people you work with to trust their intuitive skills right um and i also hear a lot of healing is happening for your clients through this process um so i don't think we can get to our intuition without healing I, I, it's, I think that's part of the process. There's a healing that's required um, so that you get there. So I'm curious, um, there's two questions I wanna explore. When did you discover the healing properties of creativity for yourself? And then the other question that leads into it, like obviously like what are the healing effects of creativity? So you can choose to explore it from your own personal experience or you know, more, um, from a general perspective yeah hmm. i know uh definitely the um the first part of your question joe is that like for me i really started to discover the healing properties of creativity when i was so out of alignment with my work um and i was just working like 
pretty much kind of golden handcuffs. It was just like I was doing it for the promotion and for the money. And it was all strategy, all left brain. And my heart really just wasn't in it. And I was having conversations all day with engineers and they were really bright people, but it was just, there was a creative element missing. And what started to happen was I was overriding my body to do this work. And, um, you know, you ignore your body for so long and it's just going to start sending you stronger signals. And I actually started having back spasms, which were literally physically making it difficult to do so much screen time and work in tech. And it was really interesting because around that same time, I started to explore a lot more with just painting and watercolors and expression outward because I had all this repressed creative energy. And I noticed that my back pain went away after I painted. And I was like, whoa, because I had been going to, uh, you know, physical trainers and doing the whole, you know, medicating. And, but this was a tool that was just like, aha, I can literally just express out, connect with soul, um, paint and my back pain went away. So I started noticing, wow, art can really heal. And ever since then, it's just been an exploration really of how can I take not only these healing properties, but these, you know, how can I take the possibilities um, with art in different modalities and apply these to people who are maybe out of alignment and work? Um, Pappy Allen says, art is a way of knowing what we actually believe. Um, So Mm -hmm. even with something like that, for example, uh, you know, there's all this like coaching advice out there for something like reframing um, our inner narrative. So, oh, maybe you're not feeling like, you know, you're good enough or something like that. Reframe what you're telling yourself. But that's still very, very left brain. What if we could bring in, you know, an exercise that's actually joyful and fun like art to give us a visual for how we actually really, you know, to kind of upgrade our inner narrative in a visual way that's so much more powerful. So these are the things that I'm working on developing because I just see so many possibilities um, for healing, but also for rebalancing, um, you know, instead of having to look at all these blueprints for how to, you know, plan our businesses and things like that from the left brain side, because people are getting exhausted. My clients are exhausted. How can we bring in these fun right brain exercises and rebalance and approach this from a holistic, uh, you know, direction. Mm -hmm. I have a question, Jordan, when you realized, um, that like when you took the step to start painting, um, as a connection to your, to your back pain, did you already have a sense of your soul and intuition or were you learning about that at the same time? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. I don't think that I was, doing a lot of work at the time around spirituality necessarily. I was just um, really in my head. And I think I was like, yeah, in therapy at the time. And I think my therapist just encouraged my creative side, uh, you know, and she was just kind of like, obviously the tech stuff isn't working, (laughs) you know, and it was just about expressing that out. And it was through expressing the pain of this misalignment in my work that I, it was real. It became real. It wasn't like, oh, there's something wrong with me. I should be able to contort myself to this. It was like, oh, my soul needs more. I'm bigger than this. I'm outgrowing this. So yeah, some of those messages came through, but I wasn't doing a whole lot of um, specifically intuition development or soul work. Okay. Okay. That's so cool. Thank you. Yeah. Haley, Christina, what, how about you, the healing journey? And just to say like, that's where Western medicine can, can work against us. Cause like, Oh, just take medication to like numb that back pain out or, you know, like seeing, seeing it as if a failure, you, you know, could be framed, reframed as like, you you know, you're a failure because you can't keep up. Well, the, it's not, it's not natural the way we're supposed, we're supposed to sit in front of screens and, Mm. spend in the amount of time we're supposed to to spend um in productivity like productivity you know that's the that's the funny thing if our world wants us to be more productive and more effective and happier employees you know then then we need more breaks we need more time for play and we need more creativity and you know break i keep mentioning Brene brown but like 
a lot of her work really aligns, like a lot of her talk, her work around vulnerability aligns with creativity. And she works with a lot of businesses because they're like, well, how can we make more innovative products? And she's like, well, first of all, you got to get rid of the culture of fear in your workplace because you know, our culture says that you can't fail or you can't do anything to look bad or look stupid. Well, then nobody's going to try anything new. Mm. Right. Um, but yeah. I don't know if Christina, if you had an answer. Well, I agree with you. And I think that uh, on top of that, it's like, it's the way we've always done it. Right. So don't go outside the box. Right. So, um, and I think a lot of people think anything outside the box is scary or what if I look stupid or I fail or whatever. And so the fear stops them from going there. But in terms of my personal experience, I feel like, or I think, okay, maybe it's mindedness, but I think I've always known um, that creativity had healing properties, but, uh, but I didn't call on them, even though I, God knows I needed to, I needed it, I needed it to save me and so on. But I had already jumped in that river of denial, who <laughs> was saying, because creativity to me at the time meant art, you know, like making art. And I, I tried that and it didn't have any impact or that I could see, right, as a kid or whatever. So I just... I just thought, no, that means artistic ability. I don't have that. So th therefore nothing until as an adult, thank God, <laughs> I focused on the process of creating whatever I wanted, not artwork, not a sculpture, not a painting, not a dance or a song or whatever. I just started focusing on the process of the experience of creating whatever it is that I wanted. And I think it was you, Haley, that said something about uh, render a, re a realistic, a realistic rendering of something, right? I love that term because as I said before, real life is creative life. So I am creating a realistic rendering of whatever it is that I want, right? And it doesn't have to be something that I'm gonna put on the fridge or you know, on the wall or whatever. So I think until that time, I didn't, um, I mean, I felt it growing up and all through, but not until that time. And that was not so long ago, actually, I'm going to say like 2014, right, that I finally got it. And it was like, this doesn't, I don't have to be an artist, you know, quote, end of quote or whatever. I can create whatever I want to, and I can feel that process. Um, my intuition is telling me to do this, and I'm called to do it. Therefore, I'm going to do it. And that's when the uh, healing, saving, and uh, feeling of how transformative it really is, right? Crea creation, cre creationary work, creativity, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> it's totally transformative. So that's so when I what, what might be an example, Christina? I'd love to hear an example of like something you might create. I create experiences, right? So again, it's that realistic rendering that you're talking about. It's like, well, realistically, I have to make dinner, you know, and I have to make it every day for five days or seven days a week or whatever. Ugh, who cares, right? Okay. I can put three things on a plate and somebody's going to be fine because you know, is going to sustain us or whatever. But is that really creative? No. Mm. So I then began to play with my food <laughs> and start saying, oh, let's see. Hmm. I'm just going to eat all white food today, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And tomorrow I'll eat all red food. And on Wednesday, I'll eat all green food or, you know, whatever it might be. So that's an example. <laughs> that is really creative. Yeah. Because yeah, we all think you eat. But, you know, and we all have to make something to eat, right? Uh, but I just didn't want it to be that kind of mundane, you know, like this is left brain bullshit. I don't want to go there. <laughs> Yeah, if you and if you ever anyone listening and if then uh, Jordan and Haley want an an idea of what Christina is talking about her uh, kaleidoscope uh, newsletter that she puts out every Friday, Christina, am I, is that yeah, correct? Friday mornings, right? Uh, it, it's a complete expression of what she's talking about because 
every like there's a theme to every one of them to but also like it just how creativity can be infused in every part of your life like Whoa. right am i am i saying that correctly yeah Christina? yeah that's it, good description can i hire you for promotion <laughs> <laughs> well i'm here yeah that's my creative yeah. deal i'm making these things yeah yeah and um, i love it so, this part of the conversation because as i said it earlier like we we think too narrowly about about creativity and it's easy for people to oh Haley's an art therapist oh creativity oh art you know and easily say well that's not for me you know mm. and we need ideas from people like Christina mm -hmm. to you know stir stir up people's imagination of how we can be more creative in our in our everyday life yeah, yeah just little, just little sparks because you know people and I think. Uh, when you were talking about like, the healing properties of um, creativity, I think before that, there needs to be an attitude adjustment, you know, in terms of semantics or, or terminology or whatever. Because just like Haley said, oh, they think, oh, Haley, she's a, an art therapist. She has something that I don't because she's an artist, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Because people think of creativity as art as opposed to how about just, you know, messing with your meals and, <laughs> or, you know, lighting fire to something that wouldn't normally be, you know, in your midst <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> so. Or like how do you get dressed in the morning, you know? Exactly. Or... Exactly. Oh my God. Oh, yeah. So good. So. Oh, oh, so good. So how, so I'm curious, Haley and Jordan, how do you, do you do anything of what George, uh, 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 Christina just said? Like, do you do you infuse creativity into your daily daily tasks does that come through for you i mean for me it's it's uh i'm very very visual and so i i i need to go for for walks every day in nature and i i'm lucky enough that i live near a river and for me it's just like seeing the beauty in things mm -hmm. and now i don't know if this is if it's like i'm creating something but i'm just to me so for me you know, in order to be creative, I need to connect, right? And by connect, I mean, connect with nature. And so for me, that could, it's just noticing and finding awe and finding gratitude in, in the beauty that's really all around us. You know, even if you're like in New York City in an apartment and you have a plant, you can, you can find awe and beauty in that plant, you know? Um, and yeah, just the daily daily walks or but it does it does it takes it takes for me i'm still at the point where yeah in my day-to-day -day life i i have to like make an effort or think about it to to get creative um like i think i kind of reserve my creativity sometimes for visual art which i think is yeah unfortunate um yeah i think I definitely try to refill my well, like you were saying, Haley, like with nature and just going to art shows too and seeing what other artists are doing. Um, but actually what's been really liberating that I'm playing around with, which is really interesting, is um, setting creative intentions. So that sounds like, uh, but that's like kind of structured. But really what it does is it just allows you to jump in more quickly because there's not all of this kind of vague, well, why am I doing this creative thing? So before I create, it's like, you know, it can be a simple creative intention that's like, I'm going to play around with clay because I haven't played with clay in a while, or I'm going to use um this technique where I use a spray bottle with water and just watch the paint drip and see what that looks like so by breaking it down with a creative intention and doing something very simple it gets any sort of resistance out of the way because I'm automatically just focused on something very doable that's accessible and fun and that I'm already curious about instead mm. of like this broader like well let me create this render something you know perfectly or whatever um, and so that also like helps with the kind of spiritual connection too, because a lot of times I'll start that creative intention with like a very heart-based, like what is asking to be created, you know, self-inquiry, but it's also kind of connected to something bigger than me. And then it's kind of fun because as a business coach too, I can set some boundaries with the creative intention too, because there's so much like creativity that goes into running a business too. So it's like, 
am I creating this to create as much value as possible as a product or as a service? Or am I going to use this like 20 minutes that I have just to create for myself? And that's really liberating too, because you're not, you don't have that running like, well, I should be doing something else or no, this is my time. And it doesn't get convoluted. Mm. Ooh, so that's, in, it sounds, Jordan, what you're saying, it sounds a little bit like uh, the mindset, uh, the mind shift that Christina was talking about, you know, like before we can get into uh, that creative space, we have to know that we can. Um, and so uh, do you find that, you know, setting that intention of, okay, I'm going to play with clay, or I'm going to play with this spray bottle, like, that's, I mean, having the awareness that you have those tools is something too, right? Like, it's like, how do you, so how do you get, is this something you do? Is it only for yourself or do you suggest that to your clients too? Oh, I suggest it to my clients, but if they don't have all the art supplies right there with them or whatever, it can be, you know, I've told people just like, you know, you can use an intention that's just like, I'm going to fuck up the page. Mm -hmm. You know, it can be something that's just like, just, and, and another thing like, um, you know, pick a color that you think is ugly because it's very surprising, like what we think is gonna look so bad or, you know, so gross using brown or whatever, it can actually surprisingly look really cool. Um, so anything like that, that you can use to kind of just like break through the resistance and just start. I love that. I totally yeah. love that. It reminded me of Carrie Smith, you know, who's like wrecked this journal and living out loud okay. and all that, right? So it's, I think she calls it uh, conceptual art, you know? So it's art. But it's like, peel the stickers off your bananas and your grapefruit and your orange and, whatever, and make some kind of collage out of that shit. <laughs> you know? So I love that. that It's like, pick, wreck this page, right? Like you said, Jordan, or pick some color. Like I would totally, you know, the, the color I hate is colorless in my mind, which is grayish, right? Like that putty color <laughs> filing cabinet. <laughs> which would be, I'm sure they exist in your world, right? The putty colored filing cabinets in a corporate office or something. So I'm like, let's, let's doctor these babies up. Let's like key them. Like you would the side of a car of your ex who, you know, ran off with somebody else. So <laughs> I think let's Whoa. do it. Keying Was there some healing there? <laughs> <laughs> like, There's always part. healing in that case. I love it. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I'm just, I'll answer my own question. I feel, um, I, the, the thinking about creativity in my daily life, I, uh, I've just started doing it with food and I, it's, uh, that's been, it's been, um, a, a game changer because it's always been a slog of like, uh, especially with having a kid now it's like, oh my God, what am I going to make for keeping people alive? Like, it's just <laughs> like, it's just. So I've noticed I, if I prepare a, at the beginning of the week and I just cut a lot of stuff at the beginning of the week, then in the middle of the week, I'm almost like, oh, I could put these two together. That's interesting, you know. Um, but Haley, to your point of uh, going out on walks yeah. and filling the well and this, so this points to the creative process, mm. right? And you, you all have talked about the process of creativity being the most important thing than the end result. So yeah, what, let's talk, let's dissect the process. Like what, what's involved um, for me? Absolutely. Like right after this talk where I'm going to go for a walk, cause I feel a lot of energy rushing through my body. I know that I have to make something or move when I feel anxiety and like a lot of energy in my body. That's an indication that I have to do something active and creative um, but yeah, like what's, what's the process? Where does it begin? I guess it's like, there's no beginning. It's just, <laughs> it starts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Christina, what do you think? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm going to say that, um, for me, the, there's the greatest creative breakthrough that I've ever made is the discovery of how a simple, uh, earthing episode. So again, out in nature, grounding with the earth, um, completely opens and transforms me and allows fresh new ideas to come in. So walking, I do a daily clarity walk. I, last year, I called it a clarity walk. This year, I'm calling it an awe walk. 
so that I try to find three things that I'm in awe of, right? Mm -hmm. So at least three things. It's very easy to do here in my happy place of colorful Colorado, but that definitely is what I'm talking about. And the more that you can actually come in direct contact with the earth through barefoot walking, uh, clearly it's winter here, but still, um, or bare hands, any kind of your bare skin touching the earth is going to um, ground you and neutralize, you know, those electrons, the electricity between us so that you can feel like this is my home. I am my home and I'm here to create my life. So that's how I do it as well. So I love the fact that you mentioned walking and I think we're all, um, you know, I know Jordan is a, a hiker as well and, and really finds a lot of good inspiration and stuff like that. And so it is, I guess, inspiration mm -hmm. is the, the start, right? But I have this journal that on the front cover, which I made myself that says, inspiration without action is just bullshit. <laughs> So not to discount inspiration, you know, because it does have the word spirit in it, but <laughs> yeah. again, you can go out on those walks and you can gather all the ideas, but what are you going to do with them? So yeah. mm -hmm. whether that means creating something, you know, tangible or product, or if it's creating some process for yourself or playing, uh, you know, to manipulate and transform, whatever that may be. Mm. So that's how I start. Yeah. In the, um, in the paint your inner voice process, um, which is a my signature kind of uh, creative process that I created, um, we always start with like a check in in the group. And so, like if I think about you know like labeling the the steps of the process, first is like just welcoming, fostering a sense of belonging, feeling like accepted in who you are. I think that it's very hard to create when you don't feel you can be yourself you know you know like when there's a lack of um authenticity and um so really creating that container that that the, the group feels safe <clears throat> and so if you're creating on your own like that could look like you know lighting a candle or doing something that re reminds you like like of your intention kind of like what jordan was saying of like okay this is my spiritual time this is my time to to be authentically me um, and then in the group, before we go into the, um, to the painting process, we, I always lead people through a guided meditation or visualization and the body's always involved. So it's like breathing, like, okay, like come back to your breath, feel your, your breath within you and see where like there's tension, you know, adjust your body. And then like, is there a release from that? And then also like, what's when you just kind of drop your attention down from your cognitive space, your left brain and, and more into your body, what comes up for you and allow, because I feel like it doesn't, you know, the whole, another myth or, around creativity is you gotta be Van Gogh or you gotta be like practically, <laughs> you know, insane to get inspiration or get uh, creative impulses or visions or it's just below the surface it, to me it's you know what I like to show people through the paint your inner voice process is it's just your inner voice is always always there it's just below the surface and all you have to do is pay a little bit of attention and allow your hand to like gravitate and then again there's your body right your body telling you oh I want this color and I have no freaking idea why but I don't have to know why and so like it just goes against, it flies in the face of, you know, like things having to make sense, you know, the linear process, um, the meaning, letting go of control. Um, you know, it seems like such a simple process. You get together in a group and you paint on paper and it's it, it needs to be on paper because when people go on canvas, they get all super like anal retentive about, oh, I can't wreck this canvas, you know? Um, and it just kind of lays bare for, for people. Um, this is a 60 cent piece of paper and these are like cheap dollar store paints. And can I just like let whatever the heck wants to come up, come up on the paper. And even then the answer can sometimes be no, you know, like, like we're so blocked. And so I do talk about 
paint your inner voice as a process because or a practice sorry because it's something that that doesn't necessarily come come easily even though as i said that your inner voice and your creativity is just there just below the surface being able to drop into a place of trust and trusting you know letting the unknown we're so afraid of the unknown letting the unknown emerge in front of you on this blank piece of paper like mm -hmm. what's you know what's the worst that could happen really mm -hmm. you know um and we're still afraid to do it we're still afraid to do it and so so i guide people in that and i and i try and help them get unblocked um but yeah the process to me usually involves some kind the creative process for me usually involves some kind of you know feeling of belonging acceptance um uh safety uh, safety but safe to be you if that makes sense not yeah. safe oh, yeah. as in I'm, I'm going to control everything yeah um and then and then meditation or some kind of centering that's how i get into the process okay and i and as somebody who participated in her program in haley's program i think three three times four times oh, more than that yeah was it it was so interesting talking about intuitive and that like under the surface because, and this was never the intention, like, but at the end, like three of us would have like similar images or like there was mate, I'm getting chills. Like there was yeah. a mate, like somebody would explain it. I was like, wow, that's exactly what I was thinking. That was like, and it was, com that's the power. <laughs> that's the power of that intuitive it's proof in a way that that is, it is real. It is tent, like you can't see it, but it is there. And we all have that intuitive power. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I saw and that happen. Connected. Sorry, I, I, I saw that happen in person before, before the pandemic. I saw that happen in person a lot. And I was like, oh yeah, of course, we're all in the same room together. But now I'm seeing that happen through Zoom where one person's in Korea, one person's in the United States. So yeah, there's, there's something about tapping into that intuition. Sorry, Christina. No, it happened. I was just gonna say it happened to me too. I also have taken the uh, paint your inner voice class with Haley and she's awesome. You were great at that guidance, right? Because okay. we, when we were poetry, we think, oh, we're going to an art class today with our girlfriends or, you know, and it's like, nope, nope, nope. You're going to have to listen. You're going to have to tune in, going to have to tap in and then let it out, you know? So, and she's awesome at that, but Thank you. I took a friend or I paid for a friend to take the class with me and we happen to be in the same room or whatever, but we're um, all on Zoom and the same thing when it came time to kind of interpret or whatever, what what had come out. It was like we both drew these peacocks, you know, or, or peacock like kind of figures or, you know, swirls or whatnot. It, it was my shirt. <laughs> Oh my God, there you go, Peacock. And of course, then, yeah, you had. Yeah, right. And then I had some knowledge about some of the uh, transform, the purification that a peacock kind of represents because they eat this these toxic, venomous things that actually produce that beautiful plumage that they have, right? So, um, so it was like, okay, I was clearly eating that toxic shit and here it came out on the page <laughs> i totally kept it though you know i'm gonna put it on my fridge later but amazing <laughs> yeah put awesome. it on your fridge <laughs> i'm gonna put it yes. on my fridge. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow amazing how about jordan anything on the process or anything inspiring that you want to add to to this what you've heard i'm glad you um brought up energetics and just energy mm -hmm. Josette, because uh, you know i work with a lot of people who are empaths or very sensitive and i think that that's just such an important piece to the overall i guess creative process is just making sure that your energy is able to kind of fr flow freely and that you're taking care to kind of cleanse. Um, I know for me, I have to do like hot Epsom salt baths and things like that, just because I pick up, you know, negative shit from the collective that I just have to routinely take care of so that when it comes, you know, that next step in the process to kind of fill my well with inspiration and things like that, I'm open to it. I'm not clogged up with these other things. Um, and then from the inspiration process, then it's like the next step is uh, that inquiry of like, 
well, what if I did this? Or what if I, you know, use that little tendril pattern that I saw in nature, like in a drawing, but connect it, you know? Um, so it's just this sort of like, what if, and Christina and Haley, what you guys are talking about, it almost sounded like, well, Haley, you said this beautiful container, it sounds like. And it's so fascinating to me that people are literally creating similar images and things like that. So it's almost like, this tapping into the unified field. So this whole inquiry isn't necessarily just what do I individually need to create, but like what's out there that, you know, I can tap into that the universe kind of needs me to create. So it's about that rebalancing too. Um, then the next step is just experimenting and playing in that no judgment, you know, the judgment free zone. Now the inner critic is, it's going to come up. So it's not about like, I don't know, killing the inner critic or anything, but just, you know, having that awareness that I'm not going to like judge myself. I'm not going to let it stop me. It's just going to come up. Um, and I've been into re more recently taking like um, a video of my creative process and my art making and playing around with that because I want to share working on my visibility issues um, and then iterating on it. Cause I think that it's, it's almost difficult. I'm like sitting here, what is my like creative process? Because it's not linear and we're always kind of just like pendulating and adding new layers and, you know, exploring these synchronicities and tapping into the unified field. So yeah, it's, it's still just like a work in progress, figuring it out. Yeah. Uh, I think this is the point and the creative process is I, I love what you said. It's, it's, it's not linear. I find for me, the creative part of the creative process is just knowing that the inner critic will come in and just acknowledging that and saying, Hey, I see you <laughs> just like, you don't, you know, I see what you're doing and not attaching to it. I think if, mm -hmm. if that's the only thing I can do in my creative process, <laughs> then I've won <laughs> or my yeah. creative process has won, you know, I call uh, that everything else. Yeah. I call that bitch slapping your ego. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Bye. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think um, that, that not waiting till it, like we, if you wait until your, your, your inner critic is silent, like that's never going to happen. You got to just mm -hmm. go, go, go forth. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Go forth. And so as we wrap up here, I think, you know, tapping into the topic of the unified field, how creativity is for the self, but also when we are in that space of intuitive space of, of, of creating something that we're actually tapping into the energy of the earth that we are elevating, we are elevating the energy. So uh, yeah, what, um, how do you feel creativity is going to support us in this, you know, in this, in healing the earth, in healing ourselves as we move forward in these insane times, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I know that every time it's, it's not like we've ever lived in a sane time, <laughs> but, you know, with, with the pandemic and everything that we've been experiencing, um, yeah, how does creativity support us all to just get beyond that? That's a big I question. I think that, 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 you know, we're up for some massive, massive challenges just as humanity with climate change coming and these wars on the horizon. And like, we have to, like, this is, this is one of, I'm glad you, you asked that because I wanted to come back from the beginning, you know, where people say creativity is just fluff and it's not important. Like our survival depends on it. And we can't, like I think Albert Einstein said, you can't solve the same problems. Same way. Of what was it? You can't solve the same problems with the same way of thinking. Yeah, we, we, we need whole new ways of thinking, whole new ways of living in the, on the planet, whole new ways of problem solving, um, of approaching things. And, you know, one of those, you know, one of the ways that we need whole new ways of is white male patriarchy like it's it's on its way out and that's why there's so much resistance right now right um and yeah like the feminine coming in uh, you know we're, we're ushering it in we need it to come in in every possible way it can whether it's through through painting on your own for your own self-care or you know 
scientists learning from Brene Brown how to get more creative and, and get more vulnerable, like it, on every level, I think we need more creativity uh, if we're going to survive as a human human race. Oh, and creativity is just like one of those last fields where it really can't be automated. And because yeah. it teaches yes. us, can't be automated, we're still going to need humans to do it. It's one of those fields that, you know, still teaches like embodiment and connection to source. So it's not just creativity and acting and making, it's um, inspired and, you know, divinely sourced creativity that's going to come in. And that's what we're really going to need to awaken to. And I think a lot of people are really rapidly waking up to it and starting to realize, wow, okay, this is a very basic part of my humanity. This is an ancient, you know, art making is like an ancient wisdom and people are waking up to the wisdom that creativity gives them. And we're going to really need to leverage that because we definitely have some things on the horizon. So we're going to need our, um, you know, creative people to come together. Mm -hmm. Well, and not just our artists, right? Like create not like artists. You know, engineers that you used to work with, right? Like mm -hmm. everybody who's gonna solve these problems is gonna have to start thinking in a whole new way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's my point exactly, is that creativity, um, I think it's that word is misinterpreted often because people think it means artistic ability or talent or you know, giftedness in that sense, right? And yet, uh I think they also think of it like money, right? Everybody wants more of it, right? Because Haley is an artist. Oh, I don't have that. I want, I want to be able to do that, right? So people want it. So, uh, and yet they quantify it or try to measure it in amounts of, right? Somebody has more than they do and so on and so forth. So okay. if we could get them to think about it in terms of, since they're already thinking about it, I guess, in terms of a scarcity kind of commodity, why not go after it, right? Everybody wants more money and they're willing to do just about anything to get more money, right? So how about we look at it like that, you know, and get people to do just about anything that they can to get more creative thinking going to solve the problems of the world because creativity isn't just for making art. It is for solving problems and for creating your best experience as, you know, your best human experience. You are a spiritual being, we all are. Again, all that kind of attitude and mindset and a different way of, uh, I think Jordan said, reframing it, right? Mm -hmm. This isn't about how artistic can you be and who's gonna win the art gallery contest or whatever. This is how can you use this creative thinking to solve problems like climate change um, mm -hmm. and the, the war zones and these kinds of big issues that we're dealing with. Again, as Josette said, there will always be big issues, but the, the fresher, newer, more ideas that we can bring, the better off we're all going to be. This experience mm -hmm. is going to be a whole lot more uh, enjoyable, colorful, spiritual, <laughs> and meaningful. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so beautiful. The, the words that come to mind for me are creativity and compassion are going to lead you know, that lead the future. It's the only things that can lead the future. Uh, and so I know the three of you have exactly that. <laughs> this is why you are doing the work you are doing. I know it. I'm so grateful you're doing the work you're doing. I want you to please continue doing it. <laughs> and because you are going to support the people who have no idea how to tap into that creativity. Uh, it is so required and nobody needs to be scared. You have helpers like Haley, Christina, and Jordan. You don't have to do it alone. Uh, and and you, you have the power to change your life through this process of, ex through this exploration of your creative being. Um, so on that note, we're gonna say goodbye. <laughs> um, and thank you so much uh, for being here. And everyone who's listening, you can access uh, the information on these three women, women in the show notes. You can contact them, get on their newsletters, follow them on social media. All that information is in the show notes. And uh, yeah, that's it. All right. So thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome.